At the beginning of the episode, we are shown a very luxurious house, and scary music is playing in the background. We see a doctor who comes over to see his patient Deirdre Mayfair who is 47 years old. This doctor has come as a replacement for Dr. Stevens. Deirdre's servant asks to give her medicine Thorazine shot. But Deirdre is looking very strange so the doctor wants to review the patient's file before giving the shot. The servant shows him the file and then the doctor gets confused and then he sees the things in her house. Which is quite strange and he sees young Deirdre in a photo. During this, a man is keeping an eye on the doctor. The doctor sees him and comes out. But that man would have left from there. Now the doctor talks to Deirdre and asks her what happened. In the next scene, a girl named Rowan is seen, who is roaming in the sea in her boat, and then she comes to the shore and meets her mother Ellie. Both are very happy. Rowan lives in the same boat and looks quite happy with her mother. Rowan is actually a neurosurgeon, and she is about to operate on a boy Joey. She makes him understand that when you wake up he will feel better. Rowan prepares for surgery. Then her senior doctor Keck tells her that he will operate. Rowan reveals that she has studied Joey's file closely and that he is her patient. Dr. Keck tells that the board decided to sit in on a procedure today so I will operate. Rowan tells that the boy has many problems and if his operation is not done properly then he may bleed. Only then does the bleeding of the boy starts and then all the people together start handling it. After some time she comes out and gets angry with Dr. Keck for this thing. But she tells her partner that we have to keep calm in every situation. Then Rowan comes downstairs and finds Ellie there. She tells that she had her skin done in which her cancer has come back. Rowan grieves for her mother. After some time Rowan meets Dr. Keck and tells him that Ravinia is hiring a research associate and I have to join it. Because she asks to put her mother's name in that list in that research. She tells Dr. Keck to talk about this to the hospital's board. But Dr. Keck refuses because he does not like Rowan and considers her arrogant. He tries to humiliate her. Then Rowan starts getting irritated by this thing. And she feels herself inside Dr. Keck's brain in which his vein explodes. Dr. Keck is actually killed by falling there. Rowan gets scared of this thing. Then we get to see the story a few years back. In which we see Deirdre as she confesses her sins to Father Duffy. Father mentions a man named Lasher appearing to her who has been seeing Deirdre since her mother died. Her Aunt Carlotta does not like it. Deirdre leaves where Carlotta has come to pick her up. Now both of them reach home. Her aunt doesn't like her talking to Lasher. She warns Deirdre to stay away from him. Deirdre then comes to her room and talks with Lasher. Lasher is actually a creature living among the Mayfair witches' family which can also change its form. He also gives advice to the witches. Then both of them talk about how Deirdre is now bored living alone here. Lasher then compliments Deirdre's mother, and dressed like her mother, asks her to attend her uncle Cortland's party. Then Deirdre moves forward towards the closet. Then in the present, Rowan tells Ellie about the incident with Dr. Keck. Ellie finds this thing strange and there she feels that Rowan is overthinking. Rowan tells that at the age of seven, she also killed a girl Lucy Stone in school by entering her mind. Rowan needs to know about her real parents. But Ellie tells that the people from where she adopted her never give this information because she has tried before. Then she wants Rowan to leave these things and concentrate on her work and asks her to bring a milkshake. Then Rowan leaves from there. After she leaves, Ellie calls the New Orleans office to speak to the agent who has been assigned to handle Rowan's file. And then she gets Cyprian's name and is told that he will call her. At night, Rowan comes to the pub where she talks to the bartender Max and then both of them get intimate after coming home. Here Max likes Rowan, and he wants a serious relationship with her. But what Rowan wants is not in Max. Then Max doesn't like this thing and he leaves. In the past we see Mr. Cortland playing with a snake at his party. Then three boys come there and Mr. Cortland goes ahead and chooses one of them and explains his work to him. After some time, Deirdre comes to the party and everyone was happy to see her. Mr. Cortland arrives there to meet Deirdre and the two talk, in which they are both happy to see Deirdre free. Mr. Cortland tells of Deirdre's necklace that belonged to her mother, and that her mother was very beautiful. Deirdre doesn't think her mother killed herself by jumping out of the window, to which Mr. Cortland says yes. Then there Mr. Cortland's chosen boy asks Deirdre for a dance, after which both start dancing at the party. Lasher keeps an eye on both of them. 
After some time Deirdre and Patrick start having sex while dancing and enjoy it a lot. The next day, Deirdre wakes up alone to find Patrick's body being carried from the villa. Now Carlotta has also arrived there to pick up Deirdre. In the present, Cyprian arrives at Deirdre's house and is there at the gate. That's when he sees Lasher there. And then Cyprian talks to Ellie and Ellie tells about killing people through Rowan. Then Cyprian tells that he feels Lasher near him. And that's why he is far away from Rowan. Ellie tells that she is in a bad condition and that if anything happens to her, he will take care of Rowan. Cyprian says yes to it. The next day Rowan attends a meeting. There Daniel, the leader of the board members of the hospital, praises the staff members there. Those people are looking for medicine to become immortal and which they will find very soon. Then Daniel meets with Rowan and tells her that he knows about her job request. Then he brings her to the office where he asks Rowan to go on a trip to another city with him. But Rowan denies it. Then Daniel gives Rowan a list of 30 patient names. And after canceling the name of one of them, he asks to put her mother's name. But Rowan tells Daniel to name 31 and add her mother too, for which Daniel refuses. Rowan then tells that if her mother finds out that she has taken someone else's place, she would kill herself. Even Rowan does not want such a wrong thing. Now Daniel calls Rowan weak then Rowan flares up. She insults Daniel by calling him very bad and arrogant. She finds herself in his mind again, and she breaks his nerve. Daniel is killed on the spot and Rowan is scared by this. After some time she comes home and tells everything to Ellie. Ellie is also scared to know that she has killed someone again. Rowan thinks she has some evil powers and then Ellie refuses. Ellie is about to die and at this time she doesn't want this kind of tension for Rowan. Then there Rowan takes care of her mother. Then in the past, we see Carlotta bringing father to Deirdre because now Deirdre has become pregnant. Deirdre talks to the father and tells about Patrick, the father of that child. Deirdre thinks Carlotta got her killed. But father doesn't think that she can get someone killed. Deirdre then reveals that Carlotta had killed her mother as well. Then the father gets furious. Deirdre is sad there, and she has to leave. Father forbids her to leave from there. Then Deirdre asks the father to leave from there. Deirdre is about to commit suicide by jumping from the balcony. Just then Lasher comes and stops her, and he calls her down. Deirdre arrives and meets Lasher. Then he tells her that her daughter will set her free. But Deirdre feels that she too will be stuck here like her. Lasher then shows Deirdre his true form which is a very dangerous creature and it can change shape too. Deirdre then adopts Lasher, and that's when her waters break. After some time, she gives birth to a child and then Carlotta leaves with that child, and she gives it to her distant cousin Ellie Mayfair. She asks to go away from there with that child and never to come back. And then Ellie asks for the name of the child, and then Carlotta tells that Deirdre wanted to name her daughter Rowan. Then in the present, we see Rowan, who sees that her mother is dead, and she is saddened by this thing. Deirdre's condition was caused by the grief of losing her child in the past, and she is seen in the present. The doctor looks at the wound on her neck and removes Deirdre's mother's necklace and places it in her clothes. He is going to give medicine there. Then he whispers in her ear that he will pretend to give her medicine for a few days. And he wants to know what happened to Deirdre. Then on the other side, Cyprian is told that Lasher is doing something. He then calls Ellie who has now passed out. Then in the sea... We see Rowan sad and she feels strange. Then she comes upstairs in her boat. She sees Lasher in the boat, and then she becomes scared. At the beginning of the episode, we get to see the story of 1681 Scotland. A girl named Suzanne goes ahead with her sister Flory to get flowers for her father's treatment. And both of them come to the woods and collect flowers. Suzanne tells her sister the names of all the flowers. And there a man comes and then Suzanne asks her sister to leave. Her sister comes to the other side and starts remembering the names of flowers. Then Suzanne starts pleasing the man with her hands. Then someone whispers her name, and crows are also seen flying there. The scene shifts to the present. Rowan calls the South Bay Adoption Agency and tries to get information about her real parents. Rowan was adopted in 1991 but the adoption agency was opened in 1995. Knowing this, Rowan feels shocked. She understands that Ellie lied to her, and she becomes sad. Rowan comes in her boat and takes a drink, then she hears the spell. On the other side, we see Deirdre and now the doctor does not give her the shot. For this reason, her condition is getting better, 
and she has started staying conscious. Lasher appears in her dreams and tells her that her daughter is alive and that he has found her. Deirdre wants to see her daughter so Lasher then tells her to wake up. Then she wakes up while her maid is feeding and Deirdre starts crying there. After two weeks, Rowan is cooking on her boat and she looks at the schedule of her hospital, in which her name is not there. Then she reaches the hospital and meets Dr. Keck, whom we saw dying in the last episode but is still alive. Dr. Keck would not have kept her shift. He feels that she is unfit to perform surgeries, because her mother has died recently, so she needs rest. Rowan says that she can forget her sorrow by working. Dr. Keck asks her to get the permission of psychiatrist Dr. Noreen Davis. Rowan comes and meets her, then the doctor asks about her sleep. Rowan falsely says she is normal because she was not getting proper sleep. The doctor now asks her about the death of Daniel Lemel as she was the last person to see him. Then Rowan flares up and there the doctor's nose starts bleeding. Rowan understands that it is because of her that's why she leaves. On the other hand, Cyprian enters Rowan's boat and touches the things there. He learns that Rowan is not sleeping properly. Also, she is now killing people. Rowan comes to her car in which Crow has done shit on her car. Seeing this, Rowan gets angry and those crows start falling on her car after dying. Then she puts those crows in her car and leaves from there. Cyprian was also watching this whole incident. Then Rowan comes to the beach and starts burying those crows and she is very sad. She doesn't understand anything that is happening to her. Rowan falls asleep after taking out Prazalam. Someone is calling her in the dream. Rowan sees Ellie there. Ellie is inviting her to a house and Rowan is following her. Cyprian sees Rowan sleeping and tells everything to his partner Samir. Cyprian says Rowan still doesn't know anything about herself. Then Samir says that if she comes to know everything together, she will be scared. He asks him to proceed carefully, then Cyprian says yes. On the other side, Deirdre wakes up and the doctor is also there. Deirdre's condition is improving so the doctor is also happy for her. Carlotta comes there and then the doctor pretends to give a shot to Deirdre, then he leaves from there. It is night, and their youngsters are partying. Rowan wakes up after hearing loud music. Then she leaves to go home. Rowan senses that someone is following her. Then she asks to come out, and Cyprian appears. He tells her that he wants to help her, but Rover gets scared. Cyprian touches her, after which he faints. After some time, he is taken in an ambulance. Then Rowan steals his phone and checks it. She comes to know that he has been following her for a long time. She finds a picture of Ellie and Deirdre there which is from the city of New Orleans. And this is the same house that Rowan had seen in her dream. Cyprian regains consciousness in the ambulance, and then leaves from there. When Rowan reaches the hospital, she is told that the man has suddenly recovered and he gets down on the way. Rowan has to ask many things from him, but now he is gone. So she decides to go to New Orleans. Rowan left for New Orleans after a few hours. Here she sees a man in this picture, who was shown to her in the boat. Deirdre, on the other hand, wears her mother's necklace at home. Now her condition is fine, and she has started seeing Lasher as well. He says that her daughter is coming here, and they will meet her the next day. Deirdre is overjoyed as well as excited. She has visual sex with Lasher and on the other hand, Rowan also feels the same feeling. The next morning, Deirdre finds that Carlotta has left for the party. Seeing the opportunity, she runs away from there, and she comes to her uncle Mr. Cortland's house. Her uncle is very happy to see her there because Carlotta had kept her in prison for a long time. Deirdre tells that her daughter is alive, and she is coming right here. By now Rowan is in town, and she turns up at the same hotel where Carlotta is at the party. While booking the room, she listens to the words of a tourist guide there. Rowan then approaches the guide and asks about the house with the picture of Ellie and Deirdre. That guide tells about the house that it is the Mayfair house. That house is famous for its witches. Rowan is scared to hear this. Then she gives money to the guide and asks to show that house. The guide tells her to meet at five. From there Rowan goes to her room to take a shower. On the other hand, Deirdre gets ready and comes in front of Mr. Cortland, who then compliments her dress. Deirdre tells that Carlotta would not allow her to wear such a dress. Then she starts chanting the spell holding her necklace. On the other hand, when Rowan is taking a shower, Lasher comes to her room. He is attached to Deirdre. Then she sees Rowan through Lasher and finds out about that hotel and that room with a key. 
Then coming back into her body, she tells her uncle that she is going to meet her daughter. Mr. Cortland tells her to take his car. Now Rowan talks to Cyprian and she asks about him. And also why is he following her? Cyprian tells I work for an organization called the Talamasca. Your mother, L, she reached out to us. She wanted me to protect you. I will explain everything to you after we meet. Rowan says why should I trust you? Cyprian says I know your powers and I can teach you how to control them. Then Rowan tells him the address but she is quite confused. After a while, Deirdre comes there, which Carlotta sees and she comes to her. She starts taking her back home. But Deirdre doesn't want to go back and says her daughter is alive. Carlotta speaks that your daughter is long dead and you are sick. Then Deirdre says if I'm awake now, so is he. Carlotta's condition starts deteriorating after hearing this. Rowan leaves her room and comes to the lift, and Deirdre is in front of her in the lift. Rowan recognizes her, and she is overjoyed. But while there, Deirdre's throat is slit and she is killed. Rowan is very sad while handling her and with this, episode 2 ends here. At the beginning of episode 3, we are shown a scene from 1681 Scotland where we see Suzanne. Here a woman is brought who is badly injured because she has been bitten by a wild boar. This woman is in a lot of pain, so she says that I would like to die. Don't give me medicines, I am going to die today. But Suzanne says that I will save you. That woman asks to give a good death. Let me fly before I go. A midwife's job is not just a cure, death is your job too. Suzanne gets very nervous. This woman asks if you are afraid of dying. Suzanne replies yes. This woman tells that one should not be afraid to die. I will go to my mother after death. That's why I want you to stop protecting me and bring me black henbane and feverfew. Black henbane is a type of plant that is very poisonous. After several requests from this woman, Suzanne starts looking at the black henbane mix. Here let me tell you that Suzanne was the first witch in Mayfair family. Only after Suzanne that the rest of the Mayfair witches are born. At the same time, the scene shifts to the present, where Deirdre is dead. And the police are questioning Rowan to find out Deirdre's real cause of death. Carlotta is also here and tells Rowan that I am your great aunt and Deirdre was your mother. But till then Cyprian comes here and Rowan starts going toward him. Carlotta is preventing her from leaving. Rowan ignores Carlotta's words and leaves with Cyprian. Cyprian brings her to the safe house. Rowan gives Cyprian's phone and asks why were you keeping an eye on me. Then he tells that I was collecting information about your life and routine, so I can protect you. The Talamasca exists to document and investigate the unexplained. Rowan shows the house in the picture and asks if he knows this house. He tells that this is Mayfair House, your aunt, and your mother used to live here. Rowan zooms in on the picture, showing the man, and asks do you know this man? Then Cyprian tells that it is connected to the Mayfair family, and they know it by the name of Lasher. It is a kind of entity about which we do not know much. Ellie was afraid that he might start visiting you. Rowan does not believe in all these things. Then Cyprian's senior Samir comes. He tells him that she is safe here. Samir asks are you sure that you will keep her with you? He replies yes. Samir has come here with his team, and together his team is pouring some liquid around the house. Outside the house, a man makes armor by magic. Then we see Carlotta who is with her cousin Neely. She asks how Deirdre's daughter is. Carlotta tells that she is much stronger than Deirdre but still we have to protect her. Neely asks about awake. Carlotta says if she comes to us, we will be able to help. She has Deirdre's necklace, and she says that with this I will bind laser to someone. Rowan notices Cyprian's many gloves. She wants to know what's the need for these gloves. Cyprian says I have a gift. Whenever I touch something, I start seeing its past. Rowan asks that you were wearing gloves when you touched me on the beach. But even then you were faint. Cyprian says you're an exception. Your gift is the strongest thing I've ever felt. Rowan asks do all the Mayfairs have gifts? He tells that not everyone has it as Deirdre had it but Carlotta doesn't have it. Mr. Cortland doesn't even have it but he can control other things in which the whole Mayfair family comes. Your family is quite wealthy and mysterious. I used to walk by that house on my way to school, and I always wondered what went on inside. I saw something there once that scared me so much that I ran, but the next day, all the same. Rowan asks did you know my mother Ellie? Cyprian tells that she told us what happened to your boss. 
She was in touch with my predecessor for many years since a playground incident happened in her childhood. Rowan gets upset that my mother already knew this, yet she hid it from me. He is going back to the hotel to try and find out who killed Deirdre, and tells Rowan no matter what happens, don't get out of this apartment. When Cyprian leaves, his sister Odette arrives. Odette asks Rowan who are you and what are you doing here? Rowan tells that she came here to meet her brother for some work. But then the fire alarm starts ringing and because of that Rowan comes out of the building. Rowan tells Odette I want to visit my aunt, can you tell me the way to First Street? Odette tells that it is a 10 minute walk from here. Rowan starts walking towards First Street from there. Lasher comes to Mr. Cortland when he is alone. Mr. Cortland tells Lasher that the 13th which has arrived. Lasher tells that she is different, and we learn here that Rowan is the 13th generation of Mayfair witches. At the same time, Cyprian also comes to that hotel and looks at the lift there, in which Deirdre had died. But when he touches the lift, he doesn't get to know anything. So he goes to the place where Deirdre's body is kept. He touches Deirdre's forehead. It appears that Rowan was separated from Deirdre when she was born. This brings tears to Cyprian's eyes. Carlotta is at her house, and she is accompanied by her maid Delphine. Carlotta serves drinks to Delphine first. Then Carlotta gives her the necklace and says that Deirdre left it for you. She asks her for help and takes her to the basement. Then locks her in there because Delphine helped Deirdre escape. Lasher is not happy with Delphine wearing the necklace, so he tries to harm her. And Delphine starts banging her head against the wall. Rowan is on her way to the Mayfair house but sees a funeral procession on the way where a woman stands next to her and says that people never die, they always remain with us. Rowan tells that I too have lost someone today. Rowan is very happy with her words because that woman has a very different point of view. She offers Rowan something to drink. Then she asks Rowan to dance and after drinking that liquid, Rowan gets intoxicated. It looks blurry everywhere. Then we come to know that the woman is Lasher, as he can take any form. During this, he comes in front of Rowan, but he is wearing a mask. He introduces himself as Adonis and starts dancing with her. Lasher says you remind me of her. And just as he was drawn toward Deirdre, he is drawn toward Rowan. They can't stop themselves and start kissing. He tells Rowan to follow him. From here he goes to a house. It is Mayfair House. When Rowan goes her mother comes in front of her. Rowan can't believe that Deirdre is standing in front of her because she was dead in the lift. But Rowan is also happy to see her mother. Deirdre says they told me that you were dead but I never gave up hope. And today you are in front of me. If you open your mind you can be transformed. But Rowan doesn't want that. Deirdre asks you felt alone, haven't you? Because you're disconnected from your blood. It is only through Lasher that both of us were able to meet. Rowan understands that this is a ruse. When she regains consciousness, she comes to know that she is lying on the side of a road. After getting up from here, she starts going towards Cyprian's building. By then Cyprian has also come here from the hotel, and he sees that there are policemen outside his building and there is also an ambulance. Then he touches the walls of his building, so he comes to know that Lasher had set the fire here. Then he goes inside with Rowan. She asks him did you go to the hotel and what did you see there? He tells that I must have been there but someone has erased all the memories from inside the lift. I tried touching the lift repeatedly but I couldn't see anything. This is the first time this has happened to me but I touched Deirdre's body. And there I saw your mother when she gave birth to you. She didn't give you away. You were taken from her. It was the strongest memory left in that body. He tells that Lasher hit that fire to get you out of the apartment. Rowan says that I am not able to control those things which are inside me. Cyprian says I can help you but for this, he wants to touch her. Rowan also agrees to this and both of them hold each other's hand. And they start looking into each other's eyes and tears start coming from both of their eyes. With this, episode 3 ends here. At the beginning of episode 4, we're shown a scene from 1681 Scotland where we see Suzanne. Her mother has died, and she starts crying about her mother's death. But the priest forbids her from doing so. Here a woman stands nearby, she says to save her tears. Because we are going somewhere in the evening. In the evening, this lady brings Suzanne to a place where many women are dancing and crying. She says this is her true funeral, where we can grieve. Susan also joins these people, and she starts crying while dancing. The scene cuts to the present where we see Rowan. 
She is getting intimate with Supreme, but only then does she feel that he is not Supreme but Lasher. Then she woke up, it was her dream. When she comes into the hall, he asks how are you? She says I am better now. Supreme says I had a strange dream. She says me too. He says you shared a lot with me yesterday. Rowan says but I don't even know you very well. Then she holds one thing and asks what it is. Supreme says it is a maple syrup tab, given by his sister. Then he asks her to get ready for the funeral. Because Deirdre's funeral is in a few hours, he too will go alone. Meanwhile, Carlotta comes down to the basement to see Delphine. But Delphine is dead, along with that necklace around her neck has also gone missing. It might be Lasher who took that necklace. Cortland is getting ready for the funeral as well. His daughter Josephine tells him to get ready quickly. We need to get there before Carlotta does. Cortland says I hope they catch whoever killed her. Josephine says whether they catch him or not, he will be punished. She had seen Lasher. It is common for the women in the Mayfair family to see Lasher. Then we see a man who is in great pain. He's running holding his head. He cannot bear this suffering. Then the people of Talamasca catch him and take him away. Everyone gathers at Deirdre's funeral. Most of the Mayfair witches are there who belong to this family. Cortland pays tribute to Deirdre but also keeps some of her hair off. When Rowan arrives, all the Mayfairs turn to look at her. Because everyone knew that Rowan was dead, but today she is alive in front of them. Then the doors open and Rose petals start raining, and this is what Lasher has done. Deirdre is taken inside the graveyard. Supreme is also there. He tells that my boss has called. They think they got the guy from the elevator, and he is being called there. Then he leaves from there. Rowan sees her name on the stone outside the graveyard. Because her name has been included in the list of people who died from the beginning. And she was kept away from the eyes of the people. Hence Rowan's name is on this stone. A man is standing at a distance and taking photos of them. And especially takes Tessa's picture which is Mayfair. Rowan has a lot of questions in her mind. So Carlotta invites her to Mayfair's house at the reception. Rowan arrives at Mayfair house in the evening and begins exploring. Carlotta gives her some photos of Ellie. Ellie was Rowan's mother who brought her up, but she is sad that her mother had kept everything hidden from her. Then Carlotta apologizes and says it's my fault. I swore her to secrecy. It is one of the conditions of taking you. So that you stay safe, your mother Deirdre also wanted you to stay away from this house. You also stay away from that person who comes to the women here. She is referring to the lasher. There are some in the family who will lie to you. They'll try to convince you that he is a gift. The devil comes in many forms. He came to me when I was eight years old, but I rejected him. Deirdre wasn't strong, but I am sure you are. That's where Tessa wants to talk to Rowan, but her mother does not allow her to talk and takes her away. Supreme accompanies Samir to the man who killed Deirdre. This man is in a lot of trouble like someone has possessed him. When Supreme puts his hand on his head, he comes to know that Lasher is dominating him now. He is furious over Deirdre's death and is seeking revenge on the man. But then that man dies and Lasher walks out from inside it. At Mayfair House, Tessa approaches Rowan again and starts talking to her. She tells that I have heard many things about you. Her mother says that my daughter is like a social justice warrior. If she starts to talk about these burned women, just walk away. Rowan tells she actually read about that. Tessa tells that she was burnt because she was one of us. She calls Rowan a designee which Rowan does not understand. Josephine approaches her and takes her inside. Then she talks about the Mayfair matriarchs who are called designees. She shows some portraits and tells that this was Antha your grandmother. There are twelve of them and our generations have been ruling this house for the last three hundred years. Rowan notices a necklace that Mayfair is wearing throughout the portrait. She asks where is this necklace now but Josephine doesn't know about it. Cortland is also looking for that necklace, but he cannot find it anywhere instead he gets his dad's pipe. Rowan is getting messages from Supreme as he is worried about her. Rowan comes out and meets her uncle Cortland. He tells about his father Julian. He used to say that one day you will handle this business and you gonna piss it all away. But now he is handling his father's business very well. He tells that he and Carlotta used to live together. But after his father's death, Carlotta threw him out of the house. Cortland tells that this house belongs to your mother. If you want, you can still take this house and I will also get the paperwork ready. He tells Lasher is an extension of yourself. 
something to connect you to your mother and the ancestors. Rowan asks how does he connect. So he says that you should ask him only. Then Carlotta comes and gives her Deirdre's rosary. She says that it will protect you from evil forces. But Cortland says don't scare Rowan and don't drag her into superstition. An argument starts between them regarding this matter. Cortland ends the argument and leaves. But while leaving, he gives his visiting card to Rowan and says that you can meet me in the office at any time. Carlotta asks her to stay for dinner until then you can explore the house. Rowan starts exploring the house. While she is looking at the house, she hears something. So she starts following that voice. She goes to Deirdre's room and there she finds the necklace, which Lasher has kept for her. Then she takes off the rosary and wears this necklace. Carlotta also sees it from behind. Rowan is feeling as if she is getting intimate with someone as soon as she wears the necklace. Then both go downstairs for dinner. Supreme is reading a book written on the Mayfair witches. Rowan sends him a picture of the necklace and says, This was in my dream. He would see that a similar necklace is also in the book. Now he begins to worry about Rowan and decides to go to Mayfair house. Rowan and Carlotta are having dinner when Rowan speaks. I heard about the portraits and the designees today. Rowan has a lot of questions regarding her mother. She asks, what was she like when she was young? When did she get sick? Carlotta says she was always sick. She asks about her diagnosis and her medical files. Carlotta says your mother was the bane of my existence. Ever since she was born, she filled my life with difficulties. I have faced a lot of trouble because of that. But even then I prayed for your mother, I protected her, then she stands up and prays for Deirdre. Supreme has also entered this house by crossing the wall. Carlotta now begins to pray loudly. Then with the help of that burning incense, she sets fire to a painting. She also attacks Rowan as she doesn't want her to come in contact with Lasher. The entire room catches fire, but only then Supreme also comes here. He is trying to open the door but still the door is not opening. Carlotta grabs the knife and wants to kill Rowan. Rowan is still standing by the door. When she moves forward to stab her, then only the door opens. And this knife accidentally hits Supreme. Rowan takes Supreme away from there to save him. Lasher comes to Carlotta and tells her she is already mine. He shuts all the doors of the house and imprisons them in the house. With this, episode 4 ends here. At the beginning of episode 5, we're shown a scene from 1681 Scotland. Suzanne is delivering a lady. She gives birth to a baby boy. But her husband looking at his child says that this is not his child, it is a demon. But by the next morning, a man comes and imprisons that lady. The one who gave birth to this child last night. Suzanne wonders why she has been arrested. She finds out the man who has caught that lady is the leader of Witchfinder. The scene shifts to the present where Rowan and Supreme are still in prison at Mayfair House but they have forgotten the incident of last night. Here they do romance then he goes to cook food for her. In this way, their every day passes like this. But they do not have the slightest idea how these people reached here. But due to the injury caused by the knife, Supreme starts feeling severe pain. Supreme's wound is not healing because of this he gets a fever and feels very tired. Rowan wants to take him to the hospital. When she goes to get Supreme's clothes, she finds a knife. She feels that she might have stabbed Supreme. But when he touches the knife, he comes to know the whole story. He tells that Carlotta tried to kill her, and the knife hit him when he came to save her. No phone is working here because Lasher is controlling this whole house. When they try to go out of the house, all the doors are closed there. Rowan even tries to break the windows but nothing happens. His wound is now bleeding. When she is trying to open the door, then there comes Supreme who is perfectly fine. Rowan is surprised to see him and checks but there is no wound. He tells that you had an injury on your head, maybe that's why you must have had a vision. But as we know it's not Supreme but Lasher. The one who has come as Supreme and the real Supreme is still lying there at the door. But then he sees a man and he is calling Antha. Antha was Rowan's grandmother who had died years earlier. Then this man tells him that he will not let you go from here. He will take your life. Actually, this man is talking about Lasher. Then Rowan looks at his hands, he's not wearing gloves. She understands that he is Lasher that's why she runs to Supreme, who is lying down at stairs. He says that Lasher will kill me, maybe I am coming between you and him. She says that I will find some way or the other. 
When she goes inside to get medicine, she meets the spirit of Carlotta's sister, Mili. She says you killed my sister? Rowan says I didn't do anything and I don't even know where Carlotta is. Then she comes to Supreme with medicine and wants to treat him. She thinks she should talk to Lasher about what he wants. She starts calling Lasher and says that I will stay here in the house. You let him go from here. Only then Supreme disappears. Rowan goes to the room, then she finds a dress there. She knows that she has to wear this dress and she comes down wearing it. Rowan asks where did you send Supreme? He asks where did you want him to go? She says home. Then he's at home. Is he alive? Lasher says yes. Lasher asks did you enjoy your time together? Everything that is happening here is what you want. Rowan says I don't want any of this. He says you wanted him, you got him. Not what you want. Rowan wants to leave. He says I think you want to dance. Then they start dancing. Rowan wants to know about him, but he doesn't answer. He says you want so many things. You want pleasure. You want sovereignty. You want it to be adored. You want cake. Then the cake appears and she starts eating it. She asks what else do I want? Then he shows her old memories. She remembers the day when she was very sad when she was young. She finds herself in the woods and she asks what do you want from me? He says all this then he kisses her. Rowan is in the room and Carlotta is hanging in the air in front of her. She tells Lasher I don't want you to kill her. He tells for 30 years she drugged her mother and kept her from using her power. But she doesn't want anything like that so she leaves from there. Meanwhile, Supreme is lying at his house still injured. Then his sister Odette comes and asks who has done this to him. He tells he visited Mayfair house and it happened there. I have called someone here and I do not want you to see all this. That's why you hide somewhere before they come. Then she goes and hides. Only then do two people come here, one of whom is a woman. And they see he is badly injured. She says how many more agents we gonna sacrifice to that family. Then she starts doing the treatment. Rowan runs into a room where Mili's spirit is. She asks how it all started, and how Carlotta used to control this house. Then she goes towards a cupboard. When she opens it, there is a diary inside it. Mili says you can't do what she did, because you're his. Rowan says no, I'm not. Then she goes to the basement to get the things needed for the exorcism where she finds Lasher again. He tells hundreds of years I've been with this family. You can't get rid of me with a handful of lettuce. Antha, your grandmother, she was just like you, smart and curious. There are some flowers and leaves here as well as an autopsy table. He tells Antha also wanted to become a doctor. Then Mili closes the door and she gets trapped inside. She also finds Delphine's dead body. Lasher tells that this is what Carlotta did and she has always been doing this. Rowan calms down and says I want to open this door and this door opens. Meanwhile, that woman is treating Supreme. With the help of her magic, she takes his wounds in her own body. She takes out the knife from inside her wound, with which Supreme was stabbed. Then he recovers and Odette also sees all this. Rowan goes to Carlotta and tells Lasher that I'm going to call the police. She can explain the body in the basement, and what she did to Supreme, and what she did to me. Let her die in jail. Then she tells Lasher to put her down. She thinks that what she says is what happens, so maybe the door will open too. When she tries to open the door, it does not open. Then Carlotta comes and she says that I know the way out. She takes her upstairs from where there is a way out. But from this balcony, Rowan cannot jump. Carlotta says what do you think, you will leave this place and start living your old life. That's life is over. He is bound to you now, as he was bound to your mother and to hers. You saved me from him and now I'm going to save you. She wants her to jump from the balcony. Rowan asks Antha didn't kill herself, did she? You were with her. I am not like Antha and I will not let you do what you did to her. Carlotta exclaims I should have killed you when you were a baby. Rowan gets angry. She bursts Carlotta's brain vein with the help of her power. Due to this she faints and falls from the balcony and is killed. She tells Lasher I didn't do this, you made me do it. Supreme is with his sister, now he is completely fine. He tells that he works for Talamasca. She says I used to think that you work as a secret agent like the FBI or CIA. Then he leaves for Mayfair House because he has to save Rowan's life. Rowan reaches the door and tries to open it, and it gets opens. Then she passes out. With this, episode 5 ends here. 
At the beginning of episode 6, we're shown a scene from 1681 Scotland. Suzanne and her sister are eating food but only then do some people come here. They take Suzanne away from her, because these people think that she uses black magic instead of medicines to cure people and that she is a witch. In the present, we see a boy named Keith. He is listening to a man's speech. The man who is giving the speech is named Arlo. This man is speaking about witches and doing evil. Keith opens his fridge and inside a jar is Deirdre's heart. He clicks many photos and shares them on the internet. Rowan is sleeping next to Cyprian in the normal world, and when she wakes up, she finds Lasher by her bed. She asks him to leave. He says I'm always with you. I'm a part of you. As she is angrily eating what we assume is some cold pasta. Then Lasher lights the candle. Now she starts liking that cold pasta very much. He encourages Rowan to touch the fire. As she touches a candle she finds that she can carry fire in her hands. At that precise moment, Cyprian wakes up and asks her what are you doing. He asks if Lasher is here. But Rowan tells a lie that he is not here. Cyprian can feel him and he is somewhere here. He says I don't understand how he's getting in with all the protection on this place. Then he sees the necklace around Rowan's neck. He understands that he has come here with its help. He takes off the necklace and says that I will deposit it in Talamasca. But then Rowan snatches that necklace from him and says this necklace is mine. I will not give it to anyone. But after a while, she calms down and apologizes and says he is in my head. He won't leave me alone. Then she hand over to him. The next day, Tessa comes to visit Rowan. She shows the troll photo of Deirdre's heart. She tells that it's Deirdre's heart. This is a group that posts about witches. We have to do something. Rowan sees Lasher in the window glass as if he is inside her. Tessa says it is all a matter of our family and we don't have the option to walk away. When they come for us, we have to stand and fight or they'll destroy us. Rowan asks if it is so important then where are the other family members? She says the family members are not taking it seriously. I thought you might take it. But Rowan does not take this thing very seriously. Tessa tells about her witch power, that she can put a man under a trance for a few minutes so they can't think straight. But you have a real power right at your fingertips. Rowan advises her not to get involved in all these things and live her life normally. Later, Rowan visits her uncle Cortland and asks him to help her get rid of Lasher. Cortland is still adamant that Lasher exists for Rowan to make use of, and trying to lose him is a waste of time. Between the conversation with her medical intuition, Rowan deduces that Cortland's ALS has progressed quite far. She asks him whether he has started cell therapy, and he requests that she keep his condition a secret for the time being. Rowan agrees, but when she compares his wanting to get rid of ALS to her wanting to lose Lasher, he agrees to help her. He tells her that Lasher can't be gotten rid of, he can just be transferred. As had previously been done from Catherine Mayfair to his father and Cortland's cousin, Dally Jean might know more about it. Then we see Cyprian who has brought the necklace to Talamasca. Now he's trying to find out what Mayfair House has to do with the necklace. And why is Lasher visible only to the Mayfair witches? Then he takes this necklace in his hand. He is transported back to the 1600s, where he finds that Suzanne is being tried for witchcraft. And when she appeals to the people to show sense and mercy, they decide to lock her in a cage and put her through the test of water. We assume that means that she will be drowned. If she survives, God has saved an innocent, and if she dies, she gets her just desserts for being a witch. At present Cortland contacts Dolly Jean, and when he explains the entire situation, she reminds him of the risks associated with it. They agree that they will let Rowan know of the situation and let her decide for herself. Cortland shows her Deirdre's hair that he cut at the funeral. Rowan arrives at Mayfair House with Jojo, where she meets Dolly Jean. She tells that with this ritual Lasher will be transferred to another Mayfair. But there will be a lot of risk in this thing are you ready to take this risk? Rowan asks how can I be at risk? She says I don't know this either. Maybe it will affect your medical carrier. But Rowan decides as she should that her medical ability is the result of her own hard work and not brought on by some supernatural entity. Then she brings her to a room where she finds a box. Inside that box there is a small doll that has all the designee's body parts in it. And this whole ritual is to be done with this doll only. She also gives Deirdre's hair which she tells her to braid. Meanwhile, 
Keith has approached a group of modern-day witch hunters, where Arlo is giving a speech. He's talking about Polly Jenkins who got burned alive last night. He says that Polly had made a deal with Devil, and she was a witch. We will not allow women like these to rule us, and we have to eliminate them. After the speech is over, Keith meets Arlo, and he presents them with Deirdre's heart, which catapults him to become an important member of their next mission, trapping the Mayfairs. Arlo starts showing it to everyone saying that we have a witch's heart. All the witches have gathered at Mayfair House and they begin the ritual. First of all, she takes the names of the twelve designees and starts kissing the dolls one by one. Then in the past knowing the horror that was about to come her way, Suzanne had no other choice but to start reciting the chant. She had been taught previously by a real witch. Because of this storms and storms come here and houses catch fire here. Everyone starts running from here. Rowan is also reciting the same chant in the present. All the witches with her are reciting the chant. Then something happens here and things start to shake. The color of Rowan's eyes changes to white. She sits down and vomits out the necklace, which is what binds Lasher to her. This is the same necklace that Cyprian is touching and seeing the vision of 1681. But now this necklace has come to her. Dolly takes this necklace to each of the Mayfair witches, to know that he has chosen someone. Tessa is chosen for this. Everyone is happy that the necklace has selected her. She is glad to relinquish Lasher. Back to Suzanne, there's fire all around her. That is when Lasher materializes and saves her from the village. The necklace is from the man leading the execution, and the key is to the cage Suzanne was locked in. That is the symbolism of the necklace, that it is a liberating tool for the wearer. Cyprian, who has been a witness to the entire thing, is knocked out, and his consciousness is trapped in this timeline. Suzanne breaks free and asks Lasher if she is a witch. Then he says you are my witch. You will have all that you desire. And in return, you are bound to fulfill an ancient prophecy. Tessa DMs Keith to visit him. She tries to attract him with her powers. But by then Arlo comes from behind and he comes to know that Tessa is a Mayfair witch. She now calls for Lasher with reciting the chant, but he does not come, and then Arlo catches her. With this, episode 6 ends here. At the beginning of episode 7, we're shown a scene from Scotland. Cyprian is lost inside his memories. In fact, he is trapped in the time of 1681. He asks Arjuna for help to get out of that. Arjuna works at Talamasca with Cyprian. Rowan is taking a walk outside when she discovers that she is pregnant. She knows that the baby is Cyprian's, but she suspects something. She got pregnant when she was stuck in the house with Cyprian which was Lasher's doing. Therefore, was her pregnancy intended by him, or was it an accident? She tries to call for him but does not use Latin words. Meanwhile, some people have also caught Tessa and put her in a cage. Keith approaches Tessa and asks when your coven gets together, do you like to call the corners? Tessa asks what do you mean, call the corners? He says I saw it in a movie. She asks do you like movies? Keith likes movies and wanted to go with someone but he could not go with anyone because his appearance is bad. Tessa begins using her power of glamour on Keith and says show me your face. Then he removes the cloth. She says that when I will leave here then we will go to watch a movie. Can you get me out of here? Keith comes to his words and starts liberating her. Then only Arlo calls him and he comes back to his senses. In order to find answers to the questions on Rowan's mind, she visits Tessa so she can talk to Lasher. Leash says Tessa is not in her room. Didn't even sleep in her bed. Probably went to a friend's. I texted her. She will talk to you when she comes. Then Rowan goes to the bathroom because she is vomiting. As she comes downstairs, she sees that Leash is crying. She learns that Jojo had a premonition about Tessa. Some kind of industrial building. She saw Tessa being tied up and they have buckets of gasoline. Rowan says how could Tessa be in trouble lashers with her. Rowan tells that she came to me yesterday. She was very upset about some guys on the internet. She said that they had stolen Deirdre's heart, and she wanted to confront them. Leash says that it is all your fault. You wouldn't help her, so she went alone, thinking he had her back. In the meantime, the family calls for a scry, which is a person who can locate things and people with the help of magic. Alonso finds that the blood of Tessa's mother is not helpful in locating her as she has other children. Rowan offers her blood and asks him to locate Deirdre's heart, as she believes that Tessa would also be there. 
The trick works, and they have Tessa's location. The family scatters to look for her, and they decide that should anybody find her, they will go as a group to avoid too much conflict. As for Rowan, Deli senses that she is pregnant and tells Cortland, who tries to force her to call Lasher, but she refuses. Meanwhile, the group plans to torture Tessa with fire, so that she can demonstrate her magical ability, while they record it all to gain credibility for their mission. Rodney says that we will need thermite fuel and then all of them go to get the fuel. Tessa tries to somehow get Lasher to call, but still, he does not come. Tessa even tries to appeal to one of the women, but it is unsuccessful as the Mayfair's business insensitivity has adversely affected her. Tessa is out of options, yet she cannot admit that she and her family are witches. Cyprian as he is trying to find a way, he hears Arjuna's voice, and she tells him that he must find the necklace, as that is what will bring him back. Cyprian knows the necklace is with Suzanne, so he tries to look for her and, on the way, finds that the entire village has been burned to the ground. Flory comes looking for him and tells him that Suzanne wants to speak with him. She leads him to their cottage when Cyprian finds Lasher waiting. He realizes that this is his memory, and he is manipulating it. The two men have a verbal spat, with Lasher saying that Cyprian wants to domesticate Rowan by leading her away from her true abilities. Cyprian retorts that Lasher just wants her to be powerful because that would benefit him. Lasher tells Cyprian that Rowan is pregnant, and leaves him in that memory with no way for him to go back. On the other hand, Arlo and his men tie Tessa out of the cage and prepare cameras, so that they can film her. Arlo asks to show her magic. She says I am not a witch, you are making a mistake. He says this is a lie, we all heard you call out to someone out in those woods. Tess tells it was a prayer my mother taught me. Cortland also calls Talamasca to inform them that Rowan is pregnant. He also tells Rowan's location where she is going. But Cyprian takes a risk and makes a potion with some hen's bane, which kills him in his memory, to revive him back in his place and time. Arjuna is sitting here beside him, and he tells Rowan is in danger, and he has to save her. Then he comes to his boss and tells him that Rowan's life is in danger. Then they set out to go to that location. But he stops the car on a bridge and throws his car key into the water. He says we are not gonna save Rowan this evening. She's gonna save herself. Cyprian says that if we do not help her, she will call Lasher. His boss also wants the same. Cyprian speaks you are in this with Lasher. His boss says if she makes a choice then she is about to fulfill a very old prophecy. And the new era will begin. Rowan also reaches that location. Rodney is about to set fire, but then Rowan comes here. And with the help of her powers, she kills him by going into his mind. Then she kills Arlo. Keith shouts she is a witch and runs away from her. Here a lady shoots at her. This bullet hits her on the shoulder, but Rowan still kills this lady with the help of her powers. A wood fire is burning near Tessa. Rowan somehow manages to pull herself together and frees Tessa. Then Tessa takes off the necklace and gives it to her. And she says it is of no use to me, it is made for you. Only then Keith returns and shoots Rowan. But it hits Tessa and she dies on the spot. Keith runs away from there. Finding Tessa dead, Rowan is furious and wants vengeance. Therefore, she does something she suspected had been within her the whole time. She calls Lasher with the power of the necklace that is back with her. At the beginning of the episode, Rowan follows Keith into the woods. But Lasher interrupts her and tells her to give him the command since she has summoned him. Rowan gives the order, and it is only a matter of time before Keith is burned alive in the cottage where he hides. Rowan faints from the loss of blood and the shock of the situation. Jojo learns about Rowan and informs Cortland about Tessa's death. Cortland thinks Rowan will be there too, but Jojo tells that she has run away. He wants to know about Rowan but Jojo doesn't understand why her father is so obsessed with Rowan. She asks him to tell the truth but Cortland does not tell anything. Cortland talks to Albert about Rowan. Then he comes and talks to Cyprian. Cyprian apologizes for not being able to help him fully, and he wants to read his mind by saying that he will do as he says. Cyprian has figured out that Albert has the power to erase one's memories. He asks him not to erase his memories because he needs them to play his part in the prophecy. Rowan is having his child and he has to be with her in the end. Albert let him go with his man. Rowan on the other hand wakes up and feels all the creatures around her. Lasher tells about Keith's death. 
Rowan starts laughing and she feels like she is about to die. She has lost a lot of blood. Lasher wants her to look deep inside her wound. Through her memories, she reaches a place that Lasher tells her is where her ancestors were. She finds some writing, which Lasher tells her is his language, and Rowan asks to learn it. He leads her to Suzanne's old cottage, which has many markings in Lasher's language. Rowan comes to know that Suzanne was a midwife, and she made a pact with Lasher. Everything written on the walls is her knowledge that she has left for Rowan. With her witchy powers, Rowan learns the language instantly and heals her wounds. She now has the powers of Lasher, and in her happiness, she chooses to be with him. Lasher is delighted with this thing. Rowan has also learned to light a fire with her hands. Lasher tells Rowan that she is destined to do great things. Rowan gets excited by Lasher's touch. He kisses her hands. Rowan kisses him then they become intimate. They stay in this world for a long time. But Rowan still faints in the real world. Meanwhile, Odette is looking for her brother and finds Talamasca's contact number. She calls there and asks about Cyprian. But there's nobody there by that name. The receptionist disconnects the call and conveys the message to Albert. Cyprian goes to meet Cortland, and while waiting for him, he takes a look at some of his things. When he finds the mask from the masquerade ball that Deirdre attended all those years ago, he realizes that Cortland is Rowan's father, and he has killed the boy that everyone thought Deirdre had slept with. He tells this to Jojo, who cannot believe that her father would do such a thing. She connects the dots when she realizes that he gave Deirdre her gown when she came to the party all those years ago. She had come for his help, but he had deflected her. Meanwhile, Albert and Arjuna arrive at Odette's house. Arjuna asked her have you just given birth? Odette asks him about Cyprian. Albert says he is fine. I was with him earlier. Then he starts erasing Odette's memories with his own hands. Rowan wakes up and reads the rest of the things in that room. She searches for Lasher. He does not come even when called. That's when her stomach starts growing. She hears Lasher's voice telling her that he will meet her at the witching hour. Then that room starts getting destroyed. Rowan comes from there to another room where her second ancestor is seen with a clock. One o'clock is shown on the clock. Then that room also starts getting destroyed so Rowan comes to another room. There she also finds her ancestor standing with a clock. This clock shows the time seven o'clock. Rowan asks Lasher to tell me what all these things mean. Then that room also starts getting destroyed so she moves to another room. Nine o'clock is shown on the clock in this room. While Rowan is in her memories, her body is still lying unconscious in the forest. Cortland finds her and takes her to the mausoleum to get her cleaned up and ready for delivery. Meanwhile, Jojo takes Cyprian to the doll made from the bones of their ancestors. When he touches it, he comes to know of the prophecy that Lasher will come back as the most powerful supernatural being at the witching hour over the bones of his ancestors. Cyprian and Jojo understand that this must mean the mausoleum and head there, but not before coming to know that the pregnancy of the 13th witch would be in hours and not months. The clock in the next room is showing 11 o'clock. Rowan finally reaches her mother Deirdre. She is the 12th witch and 12 o'clock is seen on her clock. She touches Rowan telling her Lasher is coming. She understands that Lasher is in her womb. When she wakes up and finds herself at the mausoleum, she sees Suzanne as a spirit ready to help her with the delivery. Rowan realizes that she is in the doorway and that her child is going to be Lasher. Rowan gives birth with Suzanne's help, but when she sees her baby's head contort, she gets scared and tries to run. However, this is not a normal baby, and Rowan is not an ordinary mother. But when Albert learns that Rowan has given birth, he checks with Arjuna whether Odette is lactating since she has recently delivered a child. They take her with them. The child, who is barely a few minutes old, comes crawling to her. Rowan moves towards him, but Cortland is also there. He wants to raise the child, because he believes that he is the only one with the strength to harness his power. Rowan tries to kill him, but finds that he has been granted immortality by Lasher in return for helping him. But Rowan is determined and she tells Cortland that she knows what he did to her mother. She can't kill him, but she turns him into stone, to be left in the mausoleum and forgotten eventually. When Rowan comes out of the mausoleum carrying her baby, she finds Cyprian. But Rowan realizes immediately that he would not be safe for her child. She strikes down there. Cyprian thinks Lasher is making her do this. 
But Rowan is doing this of her own free will, and she cannot lose her child like her mother. She leaves there laughing. And with this season one ends here. Do let me know in the comments section how did you like the Mayfair series. If you like this video then please like it. Subscribe to this channel as well. And if you like my work, then you can support me by donating on thanks. Thanks for watching.